Hello everybody out there, Chris here. I hope everyone's having a great week and I certainly hope you're getting better weather than we're getting right here in Kentucky right now. So I apologize for the gloominess at the moment, but wanted to make a video to show off some cool stuff uh, that we've got back from some private signings and to talk a little bit about our recent trip. So we had fall break, the kids are off for a week. And so we were gonna go down, do the beach thing like we almost always do. This year is a little bit different. Hurricane Ian kind of changed our plans. And so we called an audible and it was a perfect time to do that. Um, we ended up going up actually to DC. And for you laugh, there were a few reasons. Uh, one, uh, there was some gloominess there. Some of the remnants of the hurricane, of course, caught up to us. But two, because the way that the lockout impacted the baseball season, the season was continued just a little bit, uh, just a few days, but uh, the way our fall break works with our kids, uh, it worked out perfectly uh, because we were actually able to cross a couple ballparks off our list. So we made it to DC and uh, saw a Nationals game and uh, had the opportunity to see Bryce Harper as a Philly uh, playing in a National Stadium, which they still boo him. And then of course we had the opportunity to go to Baltimore. It's about 30 mile drive away from DC. And actually in all of my going to baseball games for years since I was a kid, uh, first opportunity I've ever had to go to a double header. Uh, so we saw Camden Yards, it instantly, you know, vaulted into my top five stadiums. Uh, I've now been to 25 of the 30 stadiums and uh, it's just a tremendous, uh, tremendous ballpark to, uh, to get to. And it's right next to Babe Ruth's birthplace. So great museum there. It's got the room he was born in. You can go visit it. Uh, it's a tremendous, tremendous museum with lots of cool relics. And of course, Babe Ruth autographs, bats, I've got the rookie card, all that kind of good stuff. But um, got to see the Orioles play the Blue Jays for two, which was awesome. And uh, actually, while we were up there, we actually stayed in a little community uh, off the uh, Bethesda, Maryland area, uh, off the metro to D.C., because we went in and, and did all the D.C. stuff, too, because we were there for almost seven days. Um, but we stayed uh, right next to the Rockville City Cemetery, and I say next to, a couple miles away, from the Rockville City Cemetery, which is where the big train, Walter Johnson, is buried. So... We went, paid our respects uh, as we try to do, get to Hall of Fame graves uh, when, when time uh, allows and when my wife is incredibly patient with us, which she was. So um, I'll try to show some of those photos uh, at the end of this video. Um, but for now, let's get this thing flipped around and let's check out some cool stuff. So in honor of the four teams that we watched play this weekend, which were the Phillies, Nationals, Orioles, and Blue Jays, we're going to limit our cards to those four teams. we got plenty for you. Um, we're going to start with Tim Raines, who did not play for the Nationals, but for purposes of this exercise, I'm counting the Expos as Nationals. So this is a beautiful 1987 Tops Tim Raines. He's uh, doing a signing uh, in the next few weeks. Um, so, uh, I've got a few more things I'm going to send out to him, but this is obviously his 1987 tops looking great in that, uh, white Expos uniform there. And then this next one is uh, actually an eBay purchase was a 1984 tops. Uh, I was able to get a pretty good price on that. Again, um, Tim Rain signed through the mail really well for a long time. So you're not going to find his autograph is too expensive. Uh, these days, he signs for between $30 and $50 per signing, just depending on uh, who he's signing with. Next card is a guy who played for not only the, the uh, Expos that became the Nationals, but he also played for the Orioles. And I feel like he might even played a year in there for the Blue Jays. I, I might be mistaken on that, but um, definitely Vladdy Guerrero Sr. So this is a great card, 1998 Tops. There's that autograph. You know I love a good horizontal card. Best perfect card for an autograph. And you can definitely tell, as I'm gonna show you here in a minute, how I still continue to harp on 
those. This is a great card to get signed. Of Vladdy, not only is he having fun, uh, but it's also um, the minted in Cooperstown, which these cards were actually stamped in Cooperstown, New York, by Top. So the fact that Vladdy ended up making the Hall of Fame and I was able to get this card just kind of makes it even more cool, if that's if that's the right word. Um, but a great addition to the collection. Speaking of Vladdy and being a part of the Nationals or Expos, he was also a part of the Orioles. So this is his 2011 card, Topps card. And just to show you kind of a, uh, a comparison, his, his autograph isn't the cleanest, but just shows you the, the top autograph just as... Just a little bit better. I'm just telling you, maybe it just looks better on the card, but it's stretched out a little bit more. But this is his last player era card, 2011 tops. He hung it up with the Orioles that year. Uh, so I love the year. Obviously, it's Mike Trout. This is a updated card, so this is could have been in a pack with that uh, Mike Trout rookie. Uh, but uh, looking at pointing at the sky. Um, obviously, hit a lot of home runs over his career. Did a lot of good things in baseball. One of the great things he did was got a son. Gave us a son. Um, this is Vladdy Guerrero Jr. This is his rookie. Uh, if you recognize it, there is no number on the back. So this is a short print out of Topps Series 2. Uh, a little bit different looking than his update rookie. Um, we sent this uh, in season to him. So surprised at how many guys did private signings this year in the middle of the season because they didn't have that many off days. But uh, Vladdy definitely took care of us. Um, I like that he put his jersey number, 27, uh, just like just like Pops, if you don't remember. So pretty cool. Uh, I showed the back. Vladdy's got his own authentication here. Um, it's like a silhouette of him swinging, says Vladdy Guerrero, and the serial number starts VG3. Um, so kind of cool. Um, if you get a card signed by Vladdy or something signed by Vladdy at a private signing, uh, that sticker comes with it. And you all know how much I love All-Star Rookie Cups, Gold Cups. And again, sorry, this uh, one touch is scratched up a little bit. That's how I sent it to get signed, and they sent it back, and I just haven't put it in a one touch yet. But here is uh, Vladdy's Tops Gold Cup, All-Star Rookie Cup card from 2020 Tops. Um, I just like what he's doing, how he's playing. He's having fun. Uh, I'm hoping he has a, a career similar, if not better, than his dad. I think he's a good Hall of Fame candidate, as long as he stays away kind of from the Cecil Fielder, um, Prince Fielder dynamic there. Uh, that back injury kind of got Prince at the end of his career, um, or definitely cut it short. But I think Vladdy's got a great shot to make the Hall of Fame. So I'm just kind of picking up some of his tops player era run as we go. And so, anyways, great looking card, I think. Speaking of guys who played for multiple teams, um, this is a guy who played for the Orioles and the Blue Jays, uh, in addition to the Indians. This is Robbie Alomar. This is a um, 1986 top style card, but it was actually in the 2021 tops uh, card issued. I love 1986. I love that year and style of card. So. Um, obviously, I love Hall of Fame autographs. I was able to get a really good deal on this particular autograph, and I like that it you know has number down here, and so it was just an authentic autograph already. So it's not necessarily a player era run. His tops run started in 1988, but still a cool card to have nonetheless. Speaking of Baltimore Orioles, who had stellar careers, this is Jim Palmer. So this is his 1975 tops, and this top this tops card screams uh, 1975 with that brown and orange, uh, the yellow down here. Um, gotta love the bird on the cap. Um, just uh, you know, a lot of cool stuff. Jim Palmer uh, at the stadium at Camden Yards, uh, big statue of his wind up and all that kind of stuff. That leg kick, so beautifully done. Signs again, ten dollars through the mail. That's a steal. Um, Next card I've got, also of Jim Palmer, is this beautiful 1980 Tops. So, uh, rocking. It almost looks like, uh, obviously, it's a, some sort of post-game, um, maybe pre-game if it was spring training photo. But no hat, um, kind of unique uh, for a baseball card. 
and uh, you've got the microphone right there in front of them. But got this nice Baltimore Orioles banner. Again, a really good job by Jim Palmer. I like his signature a lot. And talking about great Orioles hurlers, we've got the Moose, Mike Messina. So tremendous signer through the mail as well, $10 uh, also. So that's just a, a great looking card. This is his 2000 tops. And, um, you know, pretty simple autograph, but you can actually read it. And he does, uh, he does the Hall of Fame inscription for free, which is nice. So I've got that one. And uh, I also added this. This is his first tops card. It's not really considered his rookie. He had some 1991, I think, Upper Deck, Ultra um, cards come out. But this is his first Topps card. So for Topps purposes, it's his rookie. And, uh, you know, 1992 Topps. Gotta love it. So the uh, Derek, uh, yeah, no, Jeter was uh, 93. I think there weren't really any big rookies in 92. Here's a guy, um, and this is an interesting card for me always. Uh, Reggie Jackson spent 1976 with the Orioles. And I'm sure there's a reason, someone may know it, but his 19, 1977 card depicts him as a member of the Yankees. Now, it's pretty clear to me that's that's definitely, uh, I would guess he's got an Orioles uniform on, and that's definitely some sort of, um, what you want to call it? Uh, I would call it like, graphic changes or something like that today. Airbrushing, maybe the right term. Um, so I believe that photo is actually of him in an, uh, an, Orioles, an Orioles garb. But nevertheless, um, this, is a, this is a card that uh, we got back from Reggie. He uh, signs through his foundation, so he's $100 per. So don't send as many to him. It'll take us longer to get his collection, um, but a very nice card nevertheless. Here's a good uh, Hall of Famer who signs through the mail seal these days. Signs at twenty dollars a card. That's Lee Smith, who definitely played for the Orioles. I don't, I don't really remember him much as a Baltimore Oriole, uh, but clearly, you know, he's in the uniform there. Um, this is '94 traded, so he spent '93 um, with the Yankees and uh, went to uh, play for the Orioles in '94. So that's one of his two 1994 style cards. But again, good signature right there. And going next to like Mr. Oriole, uh, and that is Brooks Robinson. So Brooks is signing through the mail again. Um, he's taking a little bit of time, which is perfectly fine. A, a gentleman of his age um, just can't inundate him. So. Um, we've acquired these over the last uh, few months, uh, slowly um, working on our Brooks Robinson autograph collection. So this is 1964 Tops. You can see at, at some point this card had, looks like a pen, uh, was holding it to something. But uh, just really liked the card. Um, he did a great job signing right down here on the bottom. And we'd sent him that one. And we'd also previously sent him this one, which is his 1962 Topps cards. So a lot of his cards, he's just very pensive. He's, uh, he's thinking about something. It's almost like portraits, a lot of his cards are. So uh, especially his early cards. Um, it's, it's a while before he's uh, swinging a bat or even in the field with uh, some of his Topps cards. So just a really good job. Love his signature. And uh, he's really hooked us up. Another good Oriole, and I know this may be cringeworthy for some people, but Rafael Palmero. I mean, 500 home runs, 3,000 hits. You cannot argue with that. So he uh, obviously had his issues with baseball. This is his 1998 tops, and it is the minute in Cooperstown. And unfortunately, uh, came back with a small ding, but, you know, that's, that's what happens when you send things through the mail. Rafi still signs through the mail. He's $20 per. And um, just again, um, was a great, great ball player. Great swing. Uh, and then this is his 2005 tops, um, where obviously still as a member of the Baltimore Orioles. He hit his 500th home run shortly before this. This is his last player era card. 
Um, so he's at 551 home runs actually on this particular card. So I think there was a, a card that Topps put out uh, in 2004 that commemorated his 500th home run. Well, he's a member of, the, member of the Rangers, but beautiful autograph. Again, this is uh, that 2000, really 1997 to, to 2007 or so cards. Um, you got to work real hard to make sure they're adequately prepped for signatures so they don't smudge too bad. So um, did uh, baby powder on this one. If you don't know what I'm talking about, ask me in the comments, and I'll definitely try to... Uh, inform you. So we're back uh, kind of on the cringeworthy section of the Orioles. And this is Kurt Schilling. This is what I think is considered his rookie card, 1989 Donruss. Um, obviously briefly a member of the Baltimore Orioles, um, but he also played obviously for the Phillies. So this is actually the only Schilling autograph I've got. He's got a private signing coming up and I may get some stuff uh, sent over to him. I need to get his 1998 tops, men in a Cooperstown card done. And um, so that's definitely a possibility, but definitely a good pitcher, pretty controversial, maybe more so for his personal views on things than anything else, but uh, was definitely a heck of a pitcher. One of the greatest Phillies of all time, <laughs> obviously, uh, Ryan Sandberg did not play very long for the Phillies. I think he got his first, um, he got his first hit, only hit, um, he got as a Philly, was his first major league hit. Had one major league strikeout, and uh, he scored two runs. That was about it as a Philly. But he still counts as a Philadelphia Philly. Um, he also managed the team, so, um, you know, we'll give him that. But great signature. This is on the 2005 Tops retired signature cards. So I love 2005 Tops. Got the name up top, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so happy to have that in the collection. We've got Robin Roberts, who was a member of not only the Phillies, but also the Orioles. And this is his 1960 Tops card. He signed through the mail, uh, did a great job signing through the mail. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. Uh, this was actually an eBay uh, pickup, but he was a great through the mail signer. Uh, his, his autographs are very plentiful, uh, very affordable. And uh, so if you want to add one to your collection, uh, find a reputable seller and go to town. We've got Jim Cott, who is signing through the mail. Uh, this is, uh, these are actually, I just got them back this week. Um, I mean, like hot off the presses here. He's signing for $25 per card uh, through the mail. This is his 1963 tops. I know it depicts him as a member of the Twins, uh, but he did play for the Phillies in the 80s. So you have to cut me a break. I don't have any Cott cards of him with the Phillies. But I also sent this 1964 Tops card, and that gives you a great look at uh, his signature right now. And um, big, bold, um, I like it. I cannot complain. A Kentuckian, um, also a, an eBay purchase. Uh, this is Jim Bunning, who also did a really good job of signing. There's a lot of Jim Bunning stuff out there. And um, obviously uh, a member of the Phillies, and uh, Hall of Famer, Kentucky Senator, um, before he passed away. So um, happy to have, this is a really good looking card anyways, um, but happy to have that uh, on our, in our collection. Another Philly, Jim Tomey. So Tomey comes to my neck of the woods. He coaches his 14 year old son. I think he's 14, 13 or 14. Um, and uh, so, we, uh, I haven't seen him or got him in person. I haven't asked in person. I need to ask next time he's here. Uh, but this is a uh, purchase through uh, Atomic Sports. So good looking card for sure. And uh, a great auto as always. Uh, these are through the mail. You know, I like Steve Carlton. I think he is uh, one of the greatest left-handed pitchers uh, of all time. He's definitely up there with, among others, Koufax and... Uh, obviously Kershaw, so but Steve Carlton, uh, great stuff, lots of strikeouts, 1983, would have been a great season, and this is a photo that would have been either that season or shortly thereafter, this is his 1984 tops, shows them in those, uh, I think those are the powder blues uh, that the Phillies were rocking, so great looking card, and um, obviously great player, got a couple, 
because this is his 1974 tops. Uh, also depicts him as a member of the Phillies. Uh, started out with the Cardinals. Uh, ended up playing with the Phillies for, obviously had some of his better years for the Phillies. Uh, and then finished out with the, um, the Indians, the Giants, the White Sox, and finished with the Twins. So, um, nevertheless, great signature. Working uh, towards getting our Carlton run done. And then, of course, we're going to leave you with a big one, uh, which is Frank Robinson. Just one of the better players of all time. MVP, both leagues. Uh, won chunks of World Series. Um, was just a big-time big, big time player. Uh, maybe not a player-friendly manager, but um, definitely was a friend to signing. And so this is a beautiful 1973 Topps. Um, it's a great looking card. Um, obviously, he's uh, looks like he's probably in his Dodgers gear there. He's uh, doesn't look like an Angels uh, team because that definitely looks like a Dodgers jersey. Um, it looks like they're playing the Phillies. So of course, the California Angels wouldn't have been playing the Phillies at that time. But uh, so I'd say this is a little bit of airbrush. But certainly a, a great signature signed in ballpoint pen. Uh, bought this one authenticated and uh, just really like the card. Um, obviously, like I said, a horizontal card. Um, and uh, he's just got a beautiful signature there. So, well, I uh, hope everyone enjoyed what we had to show. We're going to leave with some videos and photos of our trip and uh, to see, among others, Walter Johnson's grave and beautiful Camden Yards and eh, meh. Washington National Stadium. So, hope everyone had a good one. We will catch you next time. Doesn't it hurt?